Hey, welcome to the .NET version of the Generative AI course for beginner. This is a course where we are going to have a set of lessons. And the main idea here is to show and help the .NET community to basically know how to use Generative AI. We are going to see and we are going to review main topics like large language models, small language models, the use of local models and cloud models, embeddings, vector, databases, and more. And we are going to try to focus more on the practical part, showing code, showing real use case scenario, sharing demos that you can literally do an ACD app and deploy to Azure in a quick way. And the main idea is that if you want to know more, we have our friends from the AI team and they created the full course of Generative AI for Beginners. We are literally in the version three of this course. And this is 20 plus lessons where you can learn a lot about the specific details and a lot about the, if you want to learn how a large language model works, in example, or what is the details about Gen AI, this is the course to go. Our scenario, our course is more focused on, is more focused on practical scenarios. Like in example, when we have uh, our eShop demo, the eShop demo, the, the eShop repository is one of our key demos where we have, in example, several uh, versions of this. And this is the eShop Little, where you can see uh, that we have a list of products. This is a basically a list of products in an eShop, searching for this. And we can do a search. We can do a search for, hey, show me something for the outdoor. And this is a standard search. Let's do outdoor, zoom a little. We can standard search. And this is a standard search that you can expect when you are searching products. So we are going to have a keyword, outdoor, and then you are going to have answers, in this case, based on the name of the product. We have the outdoor rain jacket, and we have the outdoor backpack. But if you want to ask questions in a more natural language, like an example, something for rainy days, and you ask the question, of course, there are nothing there that is going to give you the answers there, but we can use semantic search. And semantic search, there are a couple of pieces moving here. We are going to talk deeply later in the course about this. But we can see here that when we use semantic search, we are going to say, hey, the suggestion here is the outdoor rain jacket. And we have a response there that is going to say, hey, rain, go away. But a longer the response there. We can even saw something, suggest me something for cooking. And we are going to have, again, connecting the dots in the, in the products. Hey, the main suggestion here is a camping cookware, $29, almost $30 here that come from there. This course, we are going to see how to implement this. In the back of this, we have, of course, aspired to do all of the uh, tracing, tracing, logging, orchestration of this. We also can see here in the trace of our, our of our questions how we have a call from the front end later to the back end and how we have all of the necessary uh, traces here, front end, back end, first open AI, the search, the response, and more. And if we go deep, there are two versions of this scenario. One that use an and again, this is all demo ready to use. One that use an in-memory vector database, so you can deploy this, and it's going to run in memory. We see here that we have three containers, a SQL for the product, for the databases products, and then we have an API with products and the front end. And we also have a version that implement the vector search using AI search. And AI search is an amazing product. It's an amazing product that you can use when you are doing vector, if you want to use vector databases. And in this scenario, when we are storing information and retrieving information, because this is all part of something that is called RAC, what we are going to see, we are using AI search. If we want to take a look at this implementation, this resource, we can see here that once you deploy this, we have again Azure AI search here. We have an Azure OpenAI here resource with all of the models that we are using, and we have a set of products. Going further here, we are going to see how when we deploy this and we have Azure AI search, we are going to see that we have an index. The index is called products. It has eight documents here, the eight products that we are using right now. If we take a look in example of the fields of the, of the products, we can see here that 
we have a visual representation of information stored in the vector database, which is amazing because we can start to understand how we are working. We have the name, description, price, and an image for the products, which are data that we can easily access here, string, but we also have the vector, the embeddings representations here, that is the one that use Azure for the search. So all of these scenarios are going to be covered. And again, this all starts here with a simple semantic search, adding, adding here. We are going to see other scenarios, of course, if we want to do document indexing, we are going to review the, the RAG chat net scenario where we can have a chat that is going to analyze, that is going to give us responses based on a database, by basically filler with documents that we can do here. We have this demo and we have other demos. We are going to review other scenarios, like an example, vision scenarios. Right now we have multimodal models that support scenarios where we can do uh, not only analyze images, but also ask questions about images. Like an example, if you have a suit of people, how many people are wearing a blue hat or how many people are wearing a red t-shirt and more, this is all something that we can do. One example of this that we want to show is this one. We imagine that we have a set of cameras, CCTV traffic cameras, and we want to analyze how is the traffic here. This is all based on a community collaboration, came from the MVP sites. And there is a project here where, in example, if we have the chance to use a GPT-4.0 model, we are using a GPT-4 model here, the latest available today, add one of these images. You can see the details of the image here, and the image have in the bottom left the name of the camera. You can really read there, but the model is smart enough to get it. In the bottom right, we have the date and time of the photo. And of course, in the center, we have the traffic one. So we can ask the model, like an example here, hey, describe this image. And we are going to have a response like this one. The image is a black and white traffic camera view of a road label. And we have all of the information. But because we are working with models that can literally give us responses for the .NET work, one word using JSON, we can even have a more sophisticated prompt like this one. I'm going to use a bigger prompt here. And this is the prompt and this is the response. So the new prompt is analyze the image and return a JSON with the fields, title, traffic, and date. And of course, we are going to say to ask the model, extract the text from the top left corner. So we have everything in the top left corner, the date, bottom right, and analyze the traffic and give me a value between zero and 100. Basically said zero is no traffic and 100 is the traffic. And we have also some uh, extra notes here and there. When we do this, the model is going to process the image again, and we are going to have a nice JSON with this information. So we can put images and the nice thing about this is we can use different other images from cameras. Let's pick up one like this one. And I will do this, repeat the process with this image. And this image is a different angle with different title, different time and more. But we are going to have here again the output, the JSON output with the response. So we can do this more. And this is literally one click away to put it all together and have an application like this one where we can see the cameras, we can see that, how the traffic is going, and we can even start to add more cameras. But hey, this is also an interesting scenario. This specific project here is running, not using a GPT model in the cloud, it's using local models. This model is using Olama. The Olama is running here. And we can see in the Olama trace how the calls are been doing. And yes, it's a long trace that we have here, but it's all running using local models. So we can even run this scenario using local models, and we are going to see how we can do that. So the whole idea of the course, as we said at the beginning, is to review this use case scenario, focus on how we can build this, share all of these demos, share all of these repositories, explain how you can build this, keep everything up to date with the latest and greatest that we have in models on the cloud, models and locals, libraries and more. And if you want to know more about an example, the specific of how embeddings work, we are going to probably 
give you a link to go and check the Zen AI, the, the Zen AI course for beginners, where go, they go deep on the explanations about the topics, and we want to focus most on the practical side. So, hey, super happy to be here, and let's start. <laughs>